In this message, let's talk about a principle that never fails. Following this particular idea gives quality and richness to life. It will also produce a peace of mind that never wavers, and the principle is integrity. Like other great ideas, it gets a lot of lip service, but it's seldom a true way of life. How people love and value a person of integrity. Integrity in everything we do, in all of our relationships with others. Integrity in what we say. Integrity in our work. But the word integrity often conjures up a person of stern and sober visage who walks the straight and narrow. That's not the kind of integrity I'm talking about. I'm talking about integrity with a sense of humor. Integrity with understanding. Integrity with kindness and gentleness. But integrity all the same. Never expediency. Never saying, well, everybody else is doing it. I guess it won't hurt if I do it too. But it does hurt. If it's wrong, and we know it's wrong, it does hurt. The seed for achievement is integrity. Integrity means honesty and the truth. Perhaps it was best put in the famous line by Shakespeare when in Hamlet he has Polonius say, And this above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. If we're true to ourselves, we cannot be false to anyone else. If our word to live by is integrity, we have what we need in a pinch. Our sleep is untroubled, and we're respected wherever we go. During the Korean War, the Chinese communists overran an American position and captured an American general. He was subjected to weeks of the worst kind of treatment, brainwashing and questioning. He never gave in. Finally, he was told that unless he answered their questions, he would be executed the following morning. That night, he wrote a letter to his wife. And at the end of the letter, he said, Tell Johnny the word is integrity. As it turned out, he was not executed. And he was later repatriated to American forces. But thinking he was going to die, he told his son that the word is integrity. Integrity means to try as best we can to know ourselves to examine ourselves as Socrates advised and make a true assessment of ourselves, an inventory of our abilities, our talents, what we want, our goals. Not long ago, I received a letter from Scott D. Palmer in which he said, I came across some advice about happiness from my mentor, Dr. Brand Blanchard, that I published in my newsletter some time back. Blanchard is one of the greatest men of our century, even though few people have ever heard of him. He celebrated his 93rd birthday last year with the publication of his latest book, Four Reasonable Men, a biographical book on Marcus Aurelius, Ernest Renan, John Stuart Mill, and Henry Sidgwick. Appropriate for Blanchard, the key virtue that leads to all the others is reasonableness. Brand Blanchard is Sterling Professor Emeritus of Philosophy at Yale University, and on the subject of happiness, he wrote, One. It is important to happiness not to think too much about it. The person who continually asks himself if he's happy is apt to miss his end. For happiness, as Aristotle thought, is a byproduct of healthful and successful activity. Bertrand Russell, who wrote The Conquest of Happiness, remarked that scientists are generally happier than artists, since they're commonly lost in objective tasks and not examining their own navels. What is important? is to find what one can do best, generally also the line most useful to others, and then to do it with all one's might. Happiness will come unsought. If one seeks it directly, one will be like the discontented old ladies who haunt Miami hotels. Number two, the main principle of my ethics is, Brand Blanchard writes, to act as to make the world as much better as possible. I've not lived up to it. No one has. There I disagree with Dr. Blanchard. He has made the world better, and so have many others. But trying to live up to it, he writes, involves constantly looking forward to the consequences of one's actions, choosing those that are likely to be fruitful, and inhibiting action from impulse. Many people think, of course, that acting on impulse is a requirement of happiness, and I agree that impulse must be there, the stronger the better, provided it's under control. But seeking happiness directly by blindly following one's impulses 
is too likely to end in hippiedom, drugs in the gutter. And the distinguished Yale professor wrote, The most important thing I've learned is the necessity of reasonableness. The person who has the least to regret, who does most for his community, whose judgment carries the most weight and is the most trusted, is the person who is steadfastly and on principle reasonable. I don't mean the intellectual who's often an impractical bore. I mean the person who in matters of belief and matters of action takes as his principle, adjust your belief or decision to the evidence. And he completes his small essay on happiness by writing, there's no one meaning of life. No two lives have the same value. The richness of a life depends not on the amount of happiness it achieves, but on finding out who one is, that is, about one's unique combination of powers, and then discovering through experiment and reflection what course of life will fulfill those powers most completely. End of quote. You'll never get better advice. I agree with Scott Palmer that Brand Blanchard, Sterling Professor Emeritus of Philosophy at Yale University, in his 93 years, most of them devoted to study and teaching and observing the human species, knows what he's talking about. And to me, reasonableness is another word for integrity. Integrity to truth, to the evidence, no matter where it leads. And I especially like his saying, the richness of a life depends not on the amount of happiness it achieves, but on finding out who one is. That is, about one's unique combination of powers and then discovering through experiment and reflection what course of life will fulfill those powers most completely. What are your powers? There's something, probably several things, that you can do especially well, that you most enjoy doing, and which will automatically provide the greatest service to others. Are you ready to discover through experiment and reflection what course of life will fulfill those powers most completely? Now that's being true to yourself, that's integrity, that's reasonableness. As a radio listener wrote to me one day, there's little we cannot accomplish as persons if we manage the conquest of inner space. Being truthful with ourselves means taking the responsibility of making the best use of what we have and what do we have. We have our underutilized minds, our abilities, our talents, and time. These are our possessions. This is really an immense amount of wealth that belongs to each of us. And it's the investment of our wealth which will determine our rate of return. Our mind, our abilities, our talents, and time. No one can take those away from us. We take them with us wherever we go, and they represent our true wealth. That's what makes the human being autonomous, although most people don't know it. They remind me of the horse or elephant that meekly does what it's told or directed to do. It's completely unaware of its own strength. It doesn't know how easily it can do what it wants to do. And millions of miraculous human creatures live in tiny prisons of their own fashioning, completely unaware of their powers to be free, to do what they would most love to do, and in so doing, reap a harvest beyond their wildest imaginings. They are slaves to their ignorance and follow each other around and around like so many processionary caterpillars. How have they invested their wealth, their minds, their abilities, their talents, and time? They're not even aware of it. As with the ownership of wealth of any kind, it's left to us to decide what use we'll make of it. We can squander it until it's gone, spend it in a helter-skelter, hit or miss fashion without much purpose or meaning. Or we can invest it with intelligence and purpose and receive an abundant return, a return which will more than provide for our families all the years of our lives. The choice is ours, and it's here that integrity comes into the picture, for we're the only ones from whom we can steal time, talent, ability, and the use of our minds. It's making the best use of what we have, what we are, in the time that's been granted us. Sound simple? Well, truth is always simple and uncomplicated. As soon as we properly invest our true wealth, we place ourselves above competition. We're no longer competing, we're creating. We're understanding something that the great majority of people have never known. Here is the foundation upon which every great career has been built in every field. So invest in that yellow legal pad and a few ballpoint pens and in your own best quiet time, start making notes. Here are some givens in the success department. 
Success has nothing at all to do with the size of the brain. The largest brain on record was the brain of an idiot. The smallest, the brain of Anatole France, who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1921. Some of the world's greatest people in every field are or were short, bald and fat, some tall and skinny, some were brilliantly educated, some had little or no schooling. The person destined for greatness is the person who decides for himself to follow his or her strongest suit. But truly successful people all have one thing in common. They all follow, consciously or unconsciously, the law of cause and effect. They're true to themselves. Although most people will give lip service to the idea of integrity, they're really not at all sure about it. With a great majority, it's often a matter of expediency. If it's expedient to be honest, fine, they're honest. If it's more expedient to realize a quick profit in some way by not disclosing the whole truth, or by shading it a bit, well, let's shade it a bit. They tend to live on the basis of short-term or even instant gratification. They don't see succeeding as a long-range program. They don't know about what I like to call the unfailing boomerang. Every time a person does something dishonest, whether it's small or large, whether it's stealing a pair of pliers from the plant or embezzling $10,000, he's throwing the boomerang. It's the same with small dishonesties, with manipulating the truth. How far the boomerang will travel, no one can tell. Or how great or small a circle it will traverse, only time will tell. But it will eventually, inevitably, come around full circle and deliver its never-failing and painful blow. Honesty, unfailing integrity, is good business. In fact, Mirabeau wrote, If honesty did not exist, we ought to invent it as the best means of getting rich. Did you know that? Well, believe me, it's absolutely true. And all we have to do, under every circumstance, is ask ourselves, is this true? Is this honest? Is this the best I can do? And if it is, go ahead with the happy realization that we've put in motion the right cause and know that the effect will take care of itself. Our only hope of real success, of winning the hearts and minds of the people we serve, is in helping them in some way and thus improving their standard of living. But if we're content to give less than our best, we're actually working against ourselves. The average working person in our society is paid for about 40 hours a week. This leaves 120 hours a week to do as we please. Never before in the history of humankind have we had so much free time. That's 120 hours a week if we sleep eight hours every night. Three times as much time as we spend on the job. How much is all that time worth? We want our leisure time, of course, time to relax, take it easy, recharge our batteries. But do we need 120 hours for that? Our greatest enemy has never changed, and his name is ignorance. And the greatest ignorance of all is the mistaken belief that we can ever receive more than we truly earn. Sooner or later, there will be an accounting. Every day, for good or bad, we're throwing the boomerang. And just as the punishment always seems to be greater than the offense, the rewards are also out of all proportion to our honest efforts. So let's summarize. What do we mean by integrity? It means giving everything we do our very best. It means being true to ourselves and to every other person with whom we come in contact. This gives meaning and comfort to our leisure time. Our rest has been earned. We know we'll move ahead toward our goals simply because we've become remarkable people. We cannot go unnoticed. The person of integrity is always needed in every undertaking. It means the willingness to keep an open mind, to look for truth wherever it leads all the years of our lives, to check things out for ourselves, to weigh what others tell us and make our own judgments. It's knowing that there's always a better way to do everything and then a better way still to do that. It's looking for that better way in everything we do. It's realizing that the person who does not read is no better off than the person who cannot read. And that a person who does not continue to learn and grow as a person is no better off than one who cannot. It means that we must walk with integrity every day of our lives if we're to truly reap the abundant harvest all the years of our lives. It's realizing that the greatest joy a human being can experience is the joy of accomplishment. Remember to think of your life as that plot of rich soil waiting to be seeded. It can only return to you that which you sow. And what do you have to sow? You have great wealth. You have a mind you can think. You have many abilities. 
You have talents that you still may not have explored, and you have time. Time which cannot be saved, stopped, nor held back for a second. Make full use of these riches, it's never too late. Use truth as your guide, integrity as your banner, and your plot of ground will return to you and yours an abundance that will amaze and delight you. And if days come in which you find yourself depressed or confused, remember this comment by Dean Briggs. He wrote, Do your work, not just your work and no more, but a little more for the lavishing's sake, that little more which is worth all the rest. And if you suffer as you must, and if you doubt as you must, do your work. Put your heart into it and the sky will clear, and then out of your very doubt and suffering will be born the supreme joy of life. This integrity message offers a strong and all-encompassing analysis of the need of leading a life anchored in truth and honesty. It underlines that integrity is a way of life that enhances ourselves and those of others around us, not just a concept. Following are some salient features and remarks about the message, definition and misconception. The message starts by underlining how frequently actual integrity is misinterpreted. It's about being honest, real to yourself, and consistent in all spheres of life, including humor, compassion, and gentleness, not about being austere or inflexible. Integrity is self-awareness and an honest evaluation of our skills, abilities, and objectives. This introspection allows us to match our behavior with our actual self, therefore enabling a more contented existence. The Law of Cause and Effect The lesson emphasizes the need of being aware of our acts and choosing those that result in good outcomes. This cause and effect idea guarantees that respect and long-term prosperity follow from our ethics. Literary and historical references abound in quotes from Shakespeare and tales of historical characters such as the American general during the Korean War, thereby highlighting the universal need of honesty. These allusions give the message credence and complexity. The advice to invest in one's brains, skills, talents, and time is practical and actionable, as the real riches we have is those things. It promotes ongoing education and development, thus optimizing our resources. Integrity in Action The lesson emphasizes how all of our choices and behavior should be directed by integrity. By acting honestly in all circumstances and doing our best, we start favorable events that complement our actual selves and help others. More importantly is the focus on how integrity shapes our society and the planet at large. It implies that a moral life not only gives prosperity and personal serenity, but also helps to create a better society. Quotations from many intellectuals and philosophers support the idea that integrity and rationality are fundamental values guiding a meaningful and successful existence. All things considered, the integrity message is a careful and motivating reminder of the need of keeping loyal to others and oneself. It motivates us to consider our behavior, make smart use of our time and resources, and live in a manner that guarantees long-lasting serenity and satisfaction.